Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. The heavyweight contender Dillian White has expressed frustration with the situation that he currently finds himself in. White, in an interview, a rare interview with IFL TV, has canvassed a number of issues, including this uh, alleged failed doping test, this situation that he's embroiled in. But he also, in this interview, spoke about his desire to fight this year, possibly in December. But he also had a few stern words for hardcore boxing fans, taking a swipe. So I'll cover these different issues one by one, some thoughts along the way. So buckle up. Let's go. So starting with some quotes from Dillian White. So he was asked of the situation by Coogan Cassius, who was interviewing White at the Logan Paul and KSI press conference in London. He said, uh, when you're a high profile sportsman, you have to learn to ride the wave. It's been very frustrating. Got to take the downs with the up. And then he was asked on his current situation involving UCAD, when will that be resolved? He stated he had no idea. He had to be patient and let that process sort itself out. And in case you just want to catch up on the backstory, so we had a fight with Oscar Rivas on July 20. Uh, allegedly ahead of that, there was a failed UCAD test from June 17. He fronted a panel hours before the fight, beat Rivas. Rivas never knew of any of the situation involving White, and neither did the public until days later when it leaked out. It came to BoxingScene.com via an article from Thomas Hauser, who canvassed all this with some of the facts, but not all. And we're still waiting for the full facts of the matter. And obviously Dillian White, he is still waiting just like the rest of us. So this whole process involving UCAD and to some sort of resolution has been playing out for a couple of months now. The whole investigation process, whatever is going on. So White says the process will have to just sort itself out. And for him, and obviously for fans, it's a bit frustrating because it's been a status quo waiting for information. What's actually really gone on here? Uh, what are the sort of mitigating circumstances? What actually happened? Was there a failed test? Was a B-sample taken? Um, what's really gone on? The whole sort of facts of the matter. And But White did say, I can fight now. I can fight. I will fight. I will be fighting this year. And then later he stated, my whole career has been made up of ups and downs. It's stressful. It's hard. It is what it is. Sometimes it's hard when all the people pretend they're on your side and they turn against you at the drop of a hat without knowing really nothing. Just speculation and people turn against you, whatever it is, what it is. So this leak of information, which has sort of put some sunlight on this issue, it has got fans in the public asking questions. Well, what actually went on? If this hadn't have come out, we would have been obviously just uh, none the wiser until something came out from UCAD, if in fact anything ever came out. But given the circumstances that White's now in, I think fan demand for information, that will see something made public at some point. And from some of the statements that Eddie Hearn, White's promoter, has made recently, he wants information public when it is ready to be made public because he believes that there is nothing to see here, that White effectively will be exonerated. He's already made statements to that effect already, saying that the panel, the hearing that White fronted ahead of the fight, found that there was no case to answer, and that was why he was allowed to continue on. But it's this whole wrap-up of information, whatever's going to happen, a report, or if there's going to be statements made public, whatever, that I think fans need too for closure. And obviously White knows this because his reputation has taken a hit in recent months with a sort of, you know, vacuum of information being filled by speculation. And White is right. People have turned against him because of the allegations of uh, performance-enhancing drugs that have been leveled against him. But that is because there's some sort of incident that occurred but we don't really know all the detail right now but could he come back in December and fight well I think they would want this whole issue being wrapped up first because you know they can't sort of announce something going go into a fight you know launch a sort of press conference or whatever with a cloud swirling over him and I know Hearn has sort of said he wants all this to be sort of wrapped up in October if possible and I think part of that would be because if he wants to have a fight for white and promote it he needs as much clearer after the resolution of this whole matter.
So for the most part, it kind of is just still the status quo, watch this space and we will see what happens. But if Dillian White was to fight in December, be interesting to see, would it be on someone else's card? Would it be in America? He's already ruled out that he doesn't want to be fighting on the um, Ruiz and Joshua rematch card in Saudi Arabia. Would he be able to front his own card? I guess there's all sorts of questions about that. Maybe some of the the reaction to whatever end up, ends up coming out from the whole UCAN situation will dictate what happens next. And possibly his ongoing popularity, because uh, if he's all but cleared, but he still can't sort of uh, account for if there was something in his system, I think there will still be some sort of backlash from fans that will just linger with his career. But as with time, some of these things fade. But once all the information is out, obviously people can move on from the matter. And because it is all sort of cloak and dagger at the moment, I think that's really what's been helping bubble this along, especially for some fans who want to know what has gone on. And White himself, he actually did take a swipe in the interview at Hardcore Boxing fans. So he was being interviewed at the KSI and Logan Paul uh, press conference in London. And he was talking of that fight saying he thinks it's great. It's bringing new fans to the game. It's glad to see that uh, fans are being brought in by these guys who are also er earning some money as well. And he was asked by Coogan Cassius about Hardcore Boxing fans knocking the fight. And then he went on a little mini tirade, which I've sort of just condensed here, but he said, hardcore boxing fans knock everything. Hardcore boxing fans are the most ungrateful people on the face of the planet. They don't appreciate nothing. And that's quite a statement from Dillian White, basically saying that hardcore boxing fans are the most ungrateful people on the face of this planet. I think, you know, that is knocking probably, you know, some of his core audience there, because hardcore boxing fans are the ones week in, week out that support the sport, that are buying the pay-per-views, that are helping keeping boxing going at certain levels of the sport. Sure, at the top level, we have all sorts of casuals coming in for the big fights. You know, that's good for those who are getting the millions of dollars at the top. But hardcore boxing fans are the one that keep the sport going. It's the engine of of the fandom especially at those lower levels some of those fights that casual fans have no interest in hardcore boxing fans are watching and appreciating so in a way i see dillian white has a point with some of this sort of stuff and sure some hardcore boxing fans have knocked the ksi and logan paul fight but on the other hand hardcore boxing fans you know without them boxing probably goes away there wouldn't be too much you know of a sport it would just be a couple of big fighters at the top end you know getting some casual fans in and that's about it it is the engine that helps sport uh, the, the sport at the lower level keep going so in one way i see what he means but on the other hand he really is dissing the guys that hold up the sport in general that support the sport, put money into the sport through watching um, fights on TV, th through merchandise, through paying for things. And the fact that hardcore boxing fans are more discerning and that they're going to call fighters and promoters on BS, well, I actually think that's a good thing for the sport. So I don't necessarily agree with Zillian White on all of this. Uh, but, you know, I would say that a decent chunk of what was that 289,000 buys for Oscar Rivas for that fight, a decent chunk of them would have been hardcore boxing fans. It wouldn't have all been casuals. So Dillian White is benefiting from hardcore boxing fans following his career. And some of those fans, have they turned against them? And is he a little bit angry about that? Well, probably. But, you know, we'll have to see what happens with his situation. But just taking a swipe at hardcore boxing fans in general, I think that's a little on the nose from White. I can see why he's doing it and some of the, the situation that he's been embroiled in. But in general, hardcore boxing fans are the lifeblood of the sport, in my view. And he was also in the interview asked about Tyson Fury and he sort of said, look, Tyson Fury, I don't want to take a, a sort of pop against him. And he basically said it might have been one of his worst performances to date and perhaps he underestimated Otto Wannan, but Wannan showed up and boxed well. And then he went on to say, if Otto Wannan wants that work, he can get it. I'll knock Otto Wannan out in six rounds. I'm the can man. If you want it, he can get it. Simple as that. So we'll have to see what happens with White in his career next. You know, I'm not going to say that I think that fight will get made because we need to see what happens with this whole situation. Is he going to be fighting on pay-per-view next? I think they might want to ease him in on a non-pay-per-view card first because, I mean, we don't know what the demand for Dillian White will be, what the blowback has been from this whole, you know, alleged failed drug test. But what did you make of his comments? 
Is he right to take a, a swipe at hardcore boxing fans, or is he kind of biting the hand that feeds at the same time? Drop a comment, loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.